Hi, my name is David Bishop, and I'll be talking uh, today on tranexamic acid at cesarean section, drug error deaths. Um, and some of my work involves uh, the South African confidential inquiry process. Um, and through that process, we've become aware of the issue of intrathecal tranexamic acid administration at cesarean section. Um, and we believe this is a growing problem and, and worthy of putting out an alarm. So this uh, report was published simultaneously in four major uh, ONG journals, the American, British, International and European Journals of Obstetric and Gynecology, and this was just a, a few weeks ago, highlighting growing international concern about this problem. And I'm going to come back to some of the recommendations in this report a bit later. Now the WOMAN trial was a double-blinded randomized control trial involving 20,000 participants. and while the primary composite outcome showed no benefit to the drug, the secondary outcomes included maternal mortality, um, and there was a benefit to using tranexamic acid in the setting of postpartum hemorrhage. The number needed to treat was 267. Um, so for every 267 amps of tranexamic acid you give, you save one life. And that led to the World Health Organization um, recommending early use of tranexamic acid in postpartum hemorrhage. And I'm not going to debate the evidence for the use of it, but one important thing to note is that the, the woman trial pr reported no adverse effects when using tranexamic acid. And this was a key finding because there were legitimate concerns regarding thromboembolism and seizures. And because none of these were detected uh, in the woman trial, it helped convince the skeptics because even if you're not convinced of the benefit, at least there doesn't seem to be harm. But the one effect that the woman trial would not have detected is a, is a drug error because of the way you handle study drugs in trials like this. They're sealed and they're either placebo or the actual drug and they won't be put on the drug trolleys in the, in the manner that occurs um, in usual practice. So that is one adverse effect that it w wasn't designed to detect. So we've seen a global increase in the use of this drug. Um, some people are even calling for its prophylactic use. And this is especially in low middle income country settings. So district hospital settings, uh, you'll see this drug being used more and more. And if you remember that the number needed to treat was 267, that effect is linked to the event rate and the mortality rate. So the biggest impact is in the settings where the results are for or the maternal outcomes are poor, which is your basic anesthetic systems and your lower resource settings. So in a country like Australia, you have to give over 35,000 amps of tranexamic acid to save one mother. But in parts of sub-Saharan -Sah Africa, it's less than 200. So there's this global increase uh, in the use of tranexamic acid. It's especially in low middle income countries. It's linked in people's minds to obstetric anesthesia. And it's being put into theaters that didn't previously have tranexamic acid, which I think is important. So this report came out in 2019 um, in anesthesia. And this was a, um, a, a series of tranexamic acid uh, drug areas, which were, they were injected intrathecally. Um, 21 cases, the last seven, all since 2015, were cesarean section. Um, and six out of seven of those cases, the patients died, usually within hours. 20 out of 21 were uh, ampule error, so a direct drug swap. And the authors wrote that they advised that tranexamic acid and not other non-anesthetic drugs should be stored in a separate location, either in or outside of the operating theater. It was accompanied by an excellent editorial by Arvind Palanasamy and Mike Kinsella, which cautioned that the use of tranexamic acid, while well-intentioned, has the potential for catastrophic collateral damage. And it occurs in low middle income country settings. And compounding this issue is the fact that bupivacaine and tranexamic acid are both patent expired drugs, so, and they're often similar size ampules, so we can't control how they look. And that makes the risk of drug swaps much higher. And they argued that because we don't give this drug uh, very frequently or with every anesthetic, it can be housed in a location that's distinct from the anesthetic drugs. Now, when this occurs, the classic presentation is that you get a failed spinal, Patients will then complain of pain or paresthesia in the buttocks, often followed by myoclonus. There is then sympathetic hyperactivity, followed by seizures, and management is predominantly 
supportive. And because of the way it pre presents with those high blood pressures and seizures, it's often misdiagnosed as an eclamptic event. So a presentation like this that follows a failed spinal must make you think of drug error. And at least three events I'm aware of, it was reported to us as a drug error, and then it turned out to be um, intrathecal tranexamic acid. The management's largely supportive. You control the seizures. You may need to intubate the patient. And then CSF lavage is something that should be considered. But for a district setting, you need to phone an expert and discuss that. So we saw our first case in 2019 uh, in South Africa, and we published this in the South African Medical Journey Journal, which was a clinical alert that we distributed widely. And one of the important things is that uh, in discussing this with some of my friends in both referral hospitals and in the private setting, uh, one of them said to me that this is unlikely to happen to them because of their systems. And this photo that I've displayed here was what he sent me the next day after finding his ampules had been mixed up, the tranexamic acid and the Marcan. Fortunately for them, their drug checking procedures prevent an error. So it's that two-fault requirement. And it's a big problem that these ampules look similar. Here's a, a, a range of photos that have been sent to me. Uh, most of them resulting in near misses because people are checking, but you can see they look similar. Recently, however, we've had an alarming number of reports. In the last 12 months in South Africa, I'm aware of seven cases of intrathecal tranexamic acid injection. Uh, five were fatal, and the remaining two had significant neurological morbidity, and they all occurred in district hospitals with occasional anaesthetists. So in response, we've put out another warning. Um, and, and this warning, has, as we've said, has is, is gone international. And included in that warning is a World Health Organization alert and a US FDA uh, alert. Now, we acknowledge that tranexamic acid needs to be used in the management of hemorrhage at cesarean delivery. But there's a danger that the lives saved from making this drug available and accessible at cesarean delivery may be outnumbered by the lives lost through inadvertent intrathecal administration. So initially what we need to do is share this information with health workers and with management. We need to ensure that there's some sort of oversight and audit, especially those of you who work in district hospitals, you need to go into your theatres and make sure you find this. Teach everyone who's involved in stocking those drug trolleys uh, that this uh, about this problem and that it needs to be separated and have protocols that insist on the physical separation of the drug. Now it's difficult to mandate in every theater that everyone does a, si a single thing but remember that often you're dealing with drug trolleys that look like this that they don't look like those sophisticated drug trolleys and it's a very bad idea to put bupivacaine and tranexamic acid on the same trolley in this sort of setting. So what I would advise is that you ensure that bupivacaine never ever comes into contact with tranexamic acid. And that means keeping bupivacaine either separately or your tranexamic acid separately, but they must never ever be in close proximity. They should not be on the same trolley. Even if you think you're putting them in separate drawers, they end up in the same drawer. And if you can, seal them off. So this is one idea from the Western Cape. They've got a tranexamic acid box that's sealed off. Another way to do this is to have a hemorrhage box. So you put the things that you will use in obstetric hemorrhage in a box and you seal it and you have to break that seal to get at the tranexamic acid. Another possibility is that you put the drug just outside the theater in a drug cupboard. So as long as you can get to it quickly, it's a drug that needs to be given within minutes and not within seconds like a, a muscle relaxant might need to be. And finally, just a reminder about the messaging. Tranexamic acid remains an important drug, and we don't want you, you to ban this from your theatres or stop you using it, but it's imperative that it's used safely. So wherever you are, go back to your theatres and look at your systems and try to stop the tranexamic acid ever coming close to the bupivacaine or ending up in the same container, because as much as we hope to save lives through the use of tranexamic acid, even one maternal death from this error is one too many. Thank you.